Hi everybody, welcome to episode 53 of Coffee with Jody, part three of building resilience and well-being into the workplace. In this particular episode, I'm gonna go deeper into those five essential arenas so that you know where to look, you know, and what, what they're actually measuring. And then we'll go through those 10 things that you can do. In my last video, we gave you a download from Eat, Move, Sleep in Tom Rath's book that focused mainly on the physical. Today, I wanna go beyond that. All right, in business today, the number one imperative of a leader is to unlock the potential in each of the people that are on their team. It's really, really important that we do that so that we can drive engagement, that we can drive productivity, but even more important, when people are working really hard, particularly in these uncertain times, it can lead to a lot of burnout unless we're diving in and exploring the different areas of well-being. People that have high levels of well-being and are engaged that are in an environment or culture that supports and nurtures their individual strengths, you have almost near zero burnout. So it's really important, not just for you know the business owners, but for the people that work in your organization and their families and beyond. So here are the five arenas. The first one is career. This focuses on, I like what I do every day. The next one is social. And here, Gallup is looking at, do you have meaningful friendships and relationships in your life? And if you do, how many? Now, some people only need one or two, others more than that. The next area is financial. And that has to do with, are you managing your money well? Next, we have community, which is, I enjoy and I like where I live. That could be the home or the physical space of where they live. And it also can be the community at large. Where the, I live in Coconut Grove. I love living here. It's an absolutely beautiful part of Miami. And yeah, I, that one, I'm, I've nailed that one. All right, so let's go into the 10. First one, when you're looking to design a well-being program in your organization, talk it over with the people who are on your teams and in your employees. Explain to them these five areas and what they mean, and then get their ideas. What does that do? It provides them the experience of having their voice heard and that that matters, and buy-in. A lot of times, in a collective conversation, you come up with really great ideas. It may be that you know everybody wants to focus on well-being that has to do with financial, or maybe everybody wants to focus on the, uh, their career and how they can actually do better in their career and enjoy more of what they do, you know, tying it, say, to their strengths. But when you have everyone involved in it, you get buy-in, and that always makes things unfold a bit smoother. Number two is tying the well-being to a meaningful culture, purpose, and mission of your company. When that's really clear, it goes a long way towards people's well-being. Number three. Number three is encourage and educate, educate and encourage people on these different areas of well-being and number four, ask them what are the ones that they gravitate towards the most. You know, some people will really gravitate toward their financial well-being. Others will gravitate more toward the social. Others will gravitate more toward the physical. The fifth area is to show interest in not only that person, uh, but also their family and the family's goals. Help them to establish some goals for themselves. Number six, you wanna provide some recognition for that, whether it's in a weekly meeting, a daily huddle, or in your monthly team meeting. Ask people to acknowledge you know, what ground have they been able to take on a goal. So for instance, 
You know, maybe somebody has the goal of saving $10,000 or maybe somebody has the goal of actually running a 5K or maybe somebody else has the goal of uh, being able to connect with family members that are spread out around the state or the country or even the world during this time and how many they wanted to do. So once you know what they are, recognize people for those accomplishments. All right, number seven. Here, when people are building out like an area, like I know when I looked at it, I said, oh, okay, I got this one pretty good, I've got this one pretty good. And then there was one area that I was like, gosh, I'm not really doing very well in this particular area. And that had to do with the social because I've been so involved in work and with my dad that I haven't paid a lot of attention outward, you know, out into my world. It's been very focused inward on my team, on my clients, and on my immediate family. So that was an area that I know, you know, I need to go to work on. The idea is to create an, a board of advisors, whether it's people that, who, who have inspired you, or somebody th whose book you can read to learn more about, so it can be virtual or it can be actually in person. But once you've found you know, somebody to support you in the areas that you need support, let them know how they inspired you, like why you would want them to be on that board. The next one, number eight, is to actually establish best practices and a platform for people to ask for support. So when we're sharing, you know, I read this book or I found these recipes or I, um, I've actually you know, found a great financial planner and I would recommend this person, whatever it is, that you can actually share best practices and people can say, hey, I'd really like to have some support with that, whether it's from their board of advisors or from the team. All right, number nine. This is where you can ask people, is there anything that I can do to help you in an area of well-being that you want to develop? And so if it's career, it could be, how do we take and apply their strengths to their area of work and to develop that? Sometimes an outside pair of eyes can make all the difference. And then lastly, number 10, is to shift from being the leader who's actually bringing forth this conversation and turn it over to the team to lead because they amongst themselves will come up with really great ideas and it's so much better when it comes from the ground up than when it comes from the top down, right? So there are 10 areas or 10 ideas that you can use to help to build resilience, to build the experience of caring and to build well-being into your organization, which ultimately leads to everyone wins. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it, and subscribe. Till next time.